the world stadium travelers back yeah what are we doing brother yeah, we're back the gang made it back i'm good um travel i, I flew in uh with all the all the snow rolling in yesterday and oh so I was man i didn't even think about that. that yeah we landed at two right when it like kind of picked up it was like that snowy rainy mix right there um i'm not sure how how the airport fared after that um because we we buzzed <laughs> out of there for sure so um yeah it was a good trip man we we had a lot of fun and uh uh, as you know, it was it was me, Strato, uh, Luke Hudson, and Leah Hudson. So Leah's up there um, in California. She drove down, and then Strato and Hudson. You know, they're they're, they're a couple of the OGs from last year. So um, yeah, it was a good time. And chalked another one off uh, for the for the West there for traveling through the West and uh, looking forward to the season next year. You know, we saw some some what those away opponents are looking like so far. So uh, it's gonna be interesting to see what the boys pick for the the travel game next year. But yeah. Yeah. So if I was beautiful, LA was beautiful, you know, the weather, the guys sleeping on the, on the sidewalk, the whole deal. It was a good, it was, a, it was an experience. That's for sure. Yeah. We can, we can talk more about it here in a second. Cause I want to hear more about kind of like what you were able to experience out there in LA, what your favorite parts of the stadium were game moments, that kind of thing, like really diving into it. Uh, but before we get there, because I'm sure it was a freaking blast. Uh, let's do this news thing, man. Let's talk about that Dolphins game. You flew in the other day. Did you get a chance to watch the Dolphins and Bills on Sunday night? Yeah, so we did. So when we got back from the game, from the the Chargers and, and the Chiefs game, we watched that um, just at the place. But we watched football yeah. at a couple of different bars. We we got to experience some, some good football over the weekend. But uh, – Dolphins do it again. They uh, they they they're gonna come to Arrowhead. They 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 kind of let one go here. You know, I don't think anybody saw Buffalo making a comeback here this season, and Dolphins losing it. But uh, you know, we we saw it in the flesh, man. The Dolphins have had a tough time beating those tough teams, and <laughs> um, here we go. It's we're going to Arrowhead. It's gonna be two degrees. You know, let's get some. It's gonna be frosty, baby, and. Whew. I'm looking forward to it for sure. I went and ordered my uh, my electric socks, but I was rooting. <laughs> Forty dollars $40 well spent. <laughs> Are they battery powered? Oh yeah, dude. App app controlled. Just turn wow. a little dial on there to get my my feet to a cozy eighty five. That's impressive. It's pretty cool. I'll uh I'll 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 let you take. I'll send you a link. I'll send you yeah. a link. Yeah. Can I wear them for the pregame and you wear them for the game? No. <laughs> We're uh, uh, moving into territory I'm uncomfortable with. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was rooting for the freaking Dolphins. You don't hear me saying that. Never. Um, they look like they had it for a minute. Josh Allen was doing Josh Allen things, 22 to turnovers this year for the guy, and they just couldn't get their offense going. So now we get to host them. It was like a guaranteed deal. We host them if they lose. The way that everything shook out over the weekend, the final scenario was Dolphins lose, play us in Arrowhead. Dolphins and Bills tie, we play the Bills in Arrowhead. Bills win, which is what ended up happening. Uh, they get the two seed and they get to host. So didn't really yeah. play out in our favor. Now, you know, if everything goes right with this Dolphins game, which we'll talk about later this week in more depth, everything goes right for us with the Dolphins game. We're going to Buffalo and playing in some more frigid temperatures, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure, which is kind of weird. Right now, Buffalo is warmer than Kansas City, um, better weather. So that's not... Uh, that's not something that happens too often, especially by the time Saturday rolls around. We're going to be yeah. sitting at a crisp three degrees, I think, in <laughs> time with a, a minus 15 real feel and 30 to yeah. 40 mile an hour wind. So brutal. Yeah. Brutal. <laughs> it's going to be great. Part of the experience, though, man. Part of the experience. Part of it, baby. That's what we do. Yeah. You know the tailgate's going to be warm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> in, in several ways. So, Peacock. We draw the Peacock <laughs> game. 
People got to buy their buy their subscriptions if they're not in Kansas City. Otherwise, you should be good with the local TV um, based on everything that's kind of been going out there. Charles Aminihue, man, he's been lobbying for us. I don't know if you saw him on Twitter, but he's been tweeting at Peacock and NBC and the team there. It's like, hey, let's try and figure something out. I have some ideas. I want to hear what those ideas are. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, whatever they are, they're going to be better than what we got now. So the direction we're headed in is where you're going to have to have you know, next year we're going to have that Paramount and Peacock and ESPN <laughs> and the whole deal, bro. I mean, that's just where we're headed. And it's good for the NFL, you know, as an organization, as a business. Oh, yeah. But it's bad, for, it's bad for us, man. It, it's not good for us, you know. It's just another money wall that we have to jump through, you know, <clears> six ninety nine, dollars whatever it is. I'm the ki- kind of guy that signs up for it, forgets about it for 12 months, <laughs> and then, like, the next – Next January, I'll be like, what is this six ninety nine that keeps coming out? And then I'll have to <laughs> and then it'll it'll be time for another wild card game. I'll be like, well, I can't delete it now because I'm I gonna keep it. it. We're keeping yep. it until after the playoffs. Yeah. And then I it's mean July it's July again before you even realize. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not good for us, man. I, I don't like the way this is headed. And uh, you know, college football is probably gonna fall suit pretty soon. And, oh, they've and uh those conference championship games, they've been posting those things up on apps. I think what we need to do is just kind of like boycott it a little bit. Like, obviously, go to the Chiefs games that are here. But for those road games, let's just listen to Mitch. Why yeah, watch it? I'm not, let's I'm just not listen to that. Mitch Holtis on uh, on 106.5. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point, man. Yeah, love a good boycott. <laughs> I love a stance. I love having something to stand for. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> well, Chiefs organizations highly sought after. We know that we've seen some other GMs get uh, made from our organization. Ballard Dorsey left and immediately got an opportunity with the Browns. And then last year or two years ago, no, it was last year. Ryan Poles goes to the Chicago Bears. So a lot of a lot of movement from our organization. The latest names to get thrown out. Brant Tillis who is, he gets all the credit for our cap situation, everything he's been able to do creatively to make sure that we have that flexibility every offseason while our players are still getting paid. He's getting requested by the Panthers, among other teams, and then Washington's reached out about our assistant GM, uh, Mike Berganzi, who's gotten a ton of credit for what we've done um, on this entire run as well. It's reminding me of the Patriots era of the early to mid 2000s when every team was just cherry picking any person they can get from that organization i mean even the chiefs fell victim to that when we pulled scott pioli and uh romeo cronell and and a few other members of that team i mean even uh we even pulled in mike vrabel that first year as a player so like we saw with players every uh every year coming from from the patriots and now you know, we're kind of we can have our fingerprints in every executive office across the league. Yeah, it was kind of interesting time, too. And you saw, you know, OCs and DCs just flying out of that place up in New England and, and jumping on board other places. But, you know, every, people are trying to tap into that and figure out yeah. what makes these teams successful. And, you know, is it the small things that they're doing every day or is it like one thing, one organizational factor or structure that makes it happen? So, you know, everybody is just trying to keep up with somebody. You know, the Chiefs are trying to keep up with somebody too. They're 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 always you know lobbying and trying to find find what the next best move is. So copycat um, league. <laughs> you got to get after it, man. You got you got to stay frosty out there. Absolutely. Yeah, we. Uh, <clears throat> yep, they want to know what the sauce is. They want to know the recipe. So hopefully, they don't give it to them. They just uh, create something unique <laughs> yeah yep, yep. that's not replicating what we're doing because that means if they're doing it we're not so yeah <laughs> the league is turning over quite a bit like literally the moment games ended we saw arthur smith get fired a lot of coaches across the league getting moved and and other coaches getting looked at um namely you know our division right we saw two mid-season firings for the broncos and chargers they're desperately looking for a replacement, not even talking about, you know, the interim coaches that were in place, Kellen Moore and the and the other actual interim in L.A. being, you know, sought after there. And then uh, Antonio Pierce for the Raiders. 
But with yeah. all these big coaching names coming up, like Jim Harbaugh, Mike Vrabel, we we all got shocked with that one today. Uh, yeah. Who who knows what's going to happen here with with the way everything's shuffling around. Yeah, and and the West is kind of a sexy place, you know. You got Vegas, you know, a lot going on over there. The, oh yeah. The Raiders have always been sexy in the NFL. Everybody wants to be a Raider. And then you got the situation in L.A. where you get Herbert and you get to live the L.A. lifestyle, right? So um, it, it's kind of a cool place to come to and be a part of, and it's going to be interesting. And I think a downfall for those teams is that you got to play Patrick Mahomes twice a year, depending on how you look at it, right? You know, some guys are probably like, hell yeah, I want that action twice they a year. They want the challenge. Some guys are, I don't want it. I don't want any part of that, right? There's chalk up two losses for me. But I think guys like Antonio Pierce, man, they're chomping at the bit to be able to play Pat Mahomes twice a year. And we – I mean, we saw him kick our ass two weeks ago, so three weeks ago. So, I mean, I, it's going to be fun to watch this offseason. That's for that's for sure. But, yeah, it was hot and spicy the last couple of days, man. I think uh, as, you know, this weekend ends with Wild Card Weekend, it could just turn up a little bit more. Oh, for sure. The heat the heat on the coaching stove is just getting started. They're all yeah. over me now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot, a lot going to happen as we kind of move through, and we'll make sure to to touch on that as we progress into the off season and through the playoffs. But one, one last note here, and this is kind of related to the chargers game. It is related to the chargers game. So I think it's a perfect segue into talking about your trip and, and everything that you guys did out there. But Chris Jones gets a pun intended timely sack in that game. He ended up buying all of his defensive line teammates and a couple of coaches on the coaching staff Rolexes for hitting that bonus. So um, some gifts, some Christmas gifts came late, but he did, uh, did supply them with some pretty uh, sexy time pieces that they're going to get to tote around courtesy of, you know, the CEO of SAC nation. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, no, I think that's well due for him. You know, I, that's a, a huge gesture for me, you know, especially with how the season played out for him sitting out the first game, whereas mm -hmm. if he could have played and gotten that sack and not had to play, and it kind of went a bit of a more team-friendly deal there. We don't have to get into that. We've already hashed that out earlier in the season. Right. Um, but, but also with some comments after the game about how I lost some money or you know early off and early on in the season while sitting out, so I just had to make that back up. You know, like I, I you know, obviously his priorities were different from Travis Kelsey's, right? Where Travis Kelsey was going to, you know, put him his name in a, a, yet another tier above what it is already. Um, but he opted yeah. out of that to make sure he was healthy for the playoffs. But, you know, I'm not mad at him. Um, I am glad he took care of some of the players and coaching staff. I think that's a cool gesture because those guys took care of him this year, right? So mm -hmm. it's not just Chris Jones up there. It's it's a, it's a definitely a, a three or four man front. And, and those rotation guys are, are huge as well. So it, it, took a, it took a village up front, man. They really killed it this season. So uh, I'm glad he did that. Um, yeah, I just had some heartburn over that a little bit over the weekend. I was kind of – that was burning me up a little bit. But that was cool to see on the sideline, you know, celebrating together. So, can't be mad oh, about dude. it. The team was pumped. The team was pumped yeah, for him. Yeah, fired up. I think fired if up. Kelsey had some financials tied to it, maybe he gets out there. Same with, like, Rice or Pacheco if there was some sort of a bonus. But definitely that motivated Jones a little bit. And they talked about it, too, like, after the game was like – Andy Reid was like, I'm not putting him out there if it's not tied to, you know, a million and a quarter for the guy. So, you know, just the fact that he gave him as long as he did. I mean, Jones has got to be thankful for that for sure, because yeah. I figured it was going to be a, you know, you get the first half and we're yanking you. And Reid yeah. just was like, you know, one more, you know, Jones, yeah. Jones detailed that pretty good. Just one more. And, you know, when Big Red holds that finger up, I feel like it carries some weight. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, I think he's uh, he's definitely the captain, that's for sure. Captain Absolutely. Of that ship. Yeah. No doubt. So <clears throat> let's move into the Chiefs and Chargers game. Obviously, not a lot here in terms of impact. Chiefs maintain the three seed going in. This is brought to you by our partners at the Atlas Saloon, always putting us up for a live show and, and doing it well. I mean, the crowd there is just mad energy, all Chiefs all the time. I uh, love going up there for for a game back in 1894 is really when that building was established and they've just turned it into what it is today, which 10 craft yeah. is on tap, a lot of themed nights, different events where you can take, you know, a, a bunch of your closest friends, go out to the bar, 
hang out, watch some sports and, you know, enjoy some live music or whatever the case is pool. I mean, they, they really got it all and it. And it's a great atmosphere. And th that part of town really is my favorite part of town just because of all the other things that you can do down there. So uh, definitely check out the Atlas Saloon and Excelsior Springs, great partners and an even better experience. If you're looking for a place to watch chiefs game, Trey, you made it out to LA. You were talking about Inglewood a little bit where the stadium is located. Did you stop by Roger Goodell's office right across the parking lot? <laughs> no, 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 man. I, I can't come. I figured you were going to go knocking way. on the door or something like I leave a written note. I don't know. <laughs> you could have Billy Madison yeah. him with some, uh, you know, a burning bag of dog poo. <laughs> no, no, no. I can't go face to face with that cat. But I will tell you, man, SoFi is absolutely beautiful. They did an incredible job with that stadium, man. It it, it was a, a a masterpiece. I mean, when we sat down, I looked over at like Strato and Hudson and I was like, wow. I mean, I mean, they killed that place, dude. It, it's incredible. It's so bright even, and shiny. Even, <laughs> even walking up to it from the outside, you're like, holy shit, man, this is incredible. Like, how did they... How did they mastermind this, man? Like, there's some serious crap that goes into that place. And yeah, and uh, we had a good experience. You know, we had uh, just to talk about a couple experiences we had. Uh, we had a Niners fan that was two rows behind us. And I'm not sure, you know, what he does for, uh, um, you know, extracurricular activities, but he didn't look like a too, too chipper and too good of a guy. Um, looks like he may actually reside in Inglewood. So if you know the area, I know it's not very good area, but uh, man, he was letting us have it the whole game. And uh, shout out to Strato, just letting him eat it right back, man. And and for for Chiefs fans, like we got we got you up, and we, we we got your number if you're a Niners fan after the Super Bowl. It, it is right. too recent, too recent for you to not say that we got you. And uh, yeah, Strato let that guy have it a little bit, and uh, he gave it back. I, I got to give it to him. But uh, yeah, that was uh, that was one of the you know more unique situations we had during the game. Like your sure. team's not even playing here, right? But, I mean, there was, man, there was a lot of Rams fans at the game. A lot of Rams fans. That you is know, so I, weird. <laughs> yeah, I, if I had to break it down percentage wise, it was probably like seventy five percent Chiefs fans. You know, you know twenty percent, you know, uh, Chargers fans, and then like a you know, maybe like a 3% Rams fans and then like a 2% miscellaneous, you know, <laughs> just random jerseys walking around and shit. But uh, yeah, it was a very it, Pro Bowl kind of vibe, man. I know you that talked about so your weird. experience that you had last year. There's a bunch of random fans walking around, right? Yeah. So that's kind of how it felt. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we found a nice tailgate. You know, we talked to Sardo. Sardo was at the game. We yeah, I was wondering if you were going to see her. Yeah, yeah, we met up with her for a tailgate. I met Christian Okoye, gave him a fastest forty koozie, and uh, so that was that was another great experience. You know, Strato had a koozie at the game, and I was like, Strato, I need that koozie, bro. And he was like, Okay. I was like, I'm about to give it to a Christian Okoye. And he was like, and I walked back after doing it, and he was like, Christian Okoye is going to use my koozie every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so worth we it. We Worth were sitting it. at breakfast Monday morning. And Strato's like, "Yeah, Christian Okoye is drinking coffee out of my koozie right now." I was like, "Yes, yes, he is." You, yes, you know it. Buddy. You yeah. know it, brother. Yeah. So you know that's you know, evolved around the game. That's some of the fun we had. We went and saw some comedy, uh, Laugh Factory Comedy Store. Did the, did that thing down in Hollywood. So that very was a lot cool. Of fun. But uh, uh, yeah, a lot of fun, man. We had a good time. Looking forward to next year. You know, this is a uh, uh, this was year two of the trip. Next year will be year three and uh, looking to get the, the large group back together. You know, last year we went to Denver, we had <laughs> seven or eight guys. So dude, what a lot a of journey. fun. This year was a lot of fun too. So uh, it's just going to be a blast every single year. You already know it. Yeah. I'm uh, disappointed. I couldn't be there, but I'm glad you guys had a good time, man. I, I love going out there to, to LA. We stayed in long beach actually when, when I went a couple years back, but so far, gorgeous, man. I, I'm glad you guys had a good time. And, and it is such a weird, weird environment, weird place to to put a stadium. Uh, one of the coolest parts was stepping out of there and seeing the old the old forum where the Lakers used to play and and won so many sure. titles. So yeah, a lot of history, sports history in that 
that general area. But, uh, you know, glad you had a good time. The game itself, I mean, nothing really too crazy there. I was impressed with Blaine Gabbert's scampers on that last drive. I know Mike Edwards had that big touchdown. That was probably like the highlight oh, moment yeah. of the game. Oh, man. But, yeah. uh, you know, what, what was it like just drinking beers? I think I saw Hudson put something up on social media, said you guys were able to smuggle something in, some a couple of beers in. Yeah, so Hudson and I have, a, like, a history of, of, you know, sneaking beers into the games. And it really started when we was, like, 21, 22. And we would sneak beers in through our hoods. And we would always get caught. But they would only, you know, the rule of thumb is they always take 50%. You take six beers, they're gonna take three. You make it in with three for your three beers, right? And so oh, we were a misdirection. <laughs> we were rolling with that same story. And everybody, <laughs> all four of us had beers in our hood. Couple, you know, had a couple beers in the in the hoodie pocket or in the back pocket, whatever it may be. And we all just walk right in. And nobody says a word to us or even asks to see whatever might be in our hood or pockets or anything. And we went through the metal detectors and the whole deal. We probably walked in with a 12 pack of beer. <laughs> I, I, we, we made a joke that we could have just walked in with the actual 12 pack instead of getting rid of the box. But, uh, Here yeah, for the we made it, with some, it made it, in, <laughs> made it in with some beers and, uh, uh, yeah, it's part of the experience for sure. Yeah. Fell, I love that. Bulletproof, that's for sure. Dude. How sick is that? Yeah. Yeah. But the Mike Edwards touchdown, that was, that was, that was electric. Uh, it was kind of like that stadium's dead. It really is like it, it's a big place have to happen in that place for people to get up and like want to be crazy. So that yeah. was the moment, really the only moment where it was like, holy shit, this is crazy. You know, and we were all jumping up and down and, you know, letting Chargers fans have it there for five minutes and then, <laughs> you know, kind of went on our way and explored around, drink some more beers. <clears throat> Love that. <clears throat> No, that's so sick. That is so sick. Well, we ended up winning the game. We finished eleven and six. That's a lot better than ten and seven. I thought we weren't. We were gonna gonna lose that one. But Blaine Gabbert, M I Z, he gets it done. He gets it done for the team. And uh, eleven wins, man. Another another eleven win season. That's like a streak that's going back since twenty fourteen. Sorry if you're hearing my my dogs back here, but um. That's a streak that's been going since 2014 with, uh, you know, those those double digit win seasons. So seeing us push it to 11 again was was definitely a little silver lining. Um, and now we're in the playoffs, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Uh, you know, we had a tough season. We really did as Chiefs fans. And I, it was only tough because it wasn't what we thought it was going to be. And it wasn't what we've had below past, expectation. But... <laughs> Yeah, but at the same time, like here we are, man. We got another chance to go to go, you know, dance, and we have to take advantage of it. And, and really, I mean, it sounds super cheesy, but we're zero and zero. So let's, let, I mean, it's time to get after it now and and make a run here. You just got to win four games. Four games. We got to win yep. four games. Postseason is a brand new season, man. <laughs> um, absolutely. So let's let's do a little playoff preview, kind of what to expect for it. But first, I think it's good to to recap kind of how we got here. Now I want to shout out the KC local coffee company that we partner with e-coffee. Um, man, I mean, what, what more can you say about a good cup of coffee other than, you know, they just put a lot of care and, and love and into what they do here, here locally. And, um, really it starts with where they source the beans and then they bring them in, ground it for you, send it whole bean, depending on how you want it to go. And then, uh, yeah, I mean that's that's honestly the best way to wake up. That's how I've been starting my days, getting up at. I've been gearing up for for seventy five hard again, Trey, getting ready for, for a March start on that. So push the <laughs> ah push the time back on the on the alarm clock to five, uh, from five thirty. So I'm gonna need those e coffee cups, black sure. coffee, please. Maybe even just an espresso shot might do me in. So. Um, so yeah, best way to do it, www.eeroastscoffee.com. And you can check out their selection there, order it. If you're here local, they do have some, some shipping deals you can look at. So, um, give them a visit. So let's go ahead and talk about how we got here, right? The season started out pretty, you know, there's a little bit of turmoil here and there, right? We saw what happened in yeah. that Lions game right off the bat. But then after that, we rattled off a few in the row, 
Got uh, got a nice confidence building win against Chicago. Got the offense rolling in that game, and then it was like after that seven and three start, we went four and three the final stretch of the season, and that included what like a three game losing streak. So yeah. you know, across that time period, we just saw a ton of critical losses, and it all came back to like fundamental mistakes. And I know we've kind of harped about it all year, right? Whether it was wide receiver drops yeah, yeah, yeah. or performance on third and short or the red zone penalties, killing drives. We had all of those problems. And before we get into some of the actual fun highlights, I just want to kind of talk about like how different this season could be if we had just strung together a couple other wins. Cause really the rest of the AFC around us was not doing much at all. Yeah. No, no, that's a that's a great point there. And and really, you know, to talk about those couple of losses there, it's really just a couple of plays. It's not full games, right? It's like we had we had the pick six uh, against the Lions, and then we had the drop against the Eagles, and you know, just small, like one percent, half a percent of the game where you know we could have played a shitty game, made that one play. And then we could have won the game, right? And we could be sitting here tied with Baltimore for the the, the conference here, and with, with you not a, even close to a good enough team as what they've played up to this season, right? They've been like beating people, right? And we're talking about you know skating by here, so we're just right. talking about a couple plays, man. Where you know, and it's it was just continuously the same plays. We just keep watching the same thing over and over every week. And so, I mean, when you when you see these Chiefs teams, man, they take a step back. They they typically take three forward, right? It's not like a, a take a step back, and then next week we take a step forward. And kind of the same place we were two weeks ago, which is what we've seen this season. And I right. think that's been the difficult part and and where Chiefs fans have gotten frustrated and where, where you are like, you know, a couple of plays away from being – that team so that's what's special about the playoffs is we have that opportunity to fix those one plays win football games because it doesn't matter what they look like you just got to win them and then you go on and you just got to do the same shit next week you just got to win it and you got to do that four times man i think that's that's been the downfall this season is like there's just there's one plays but they were never corrected that's the struggle right and i think like in my opinion, I don't know about you, but the most critical moment where we came up short was in that Buffalo game. You know what I mean? We had that opportunity. We got that touchdown late with like a minute left on the clock. I mean, our defense was pretty stifling throughout that game. And we, we I mean, we held them to yeah. 20 points. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> at that point, they would have needed a touchdown to beat us. The field goal wouldn't have done it. And we win that game the way everything ended up. The Bills aren't in the playoffs right now, and we have a commanding hold on the two seed. And that's just that one game, right? That's just a change in that one game, that one result against a conference opponent who turned it on the last half of the season. I mean, they really have looked night and day better as a team, despite all the injuries and issues that they've had on both sides of the ball. Um and so the fact that we couldn't shut the door on them at that point, I mean, I just really hope it doesn't come back and bite us in the ass in the playoffs because now they're the two seed and any road to the AFC championship game, if it's not going through Baltimore, it's going through Buffalo before it comes to us. Yep. Yep. Damn. Damn. Yep. I, I didn't piece all that together, man. That that's That is that close. I mean, it really is. It's that close. It's an inch off. It's D Ford. In nah. Tony form, an inch off from being a totally different situation, like totally yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. And Buffalo so, not being in the playoffs makes me feel so good, right? Now you got to think about now we got to go up there and play them in Buffalo, which is fine, man. You got to be good teams to win the Super Bowl, but I mean, it's that just true. It's just that game. It's just that game. We didn't beat them in the regular season, so I mean, typically yeah. what we see, okay is if the Chiefs yeah. lose somebody in the regular season, we can come back and get them in the playoffs. But this isn't a typical yeah. Chiefs team that we've had this year. This isn't the right. offensive juggernaut, the team that if they get the ball last, you know they're going to score, right? Yeah. yeah. Teams aren't as, as scared to kick field goals on us this year. <laughs> yeah, right. 
Yeah. So no, it's I, a little agree. different. Yeah. It's a little different. Yeah. So we'll bury all that. We're going to bury that with the regular season. It's a new season. Let's look back on some happy things. Yeah. Dig that grave. I'm talking more than six feet, 12 feet deep <laughs> in MF. Uh, understood. <laughs> so five pro bowlers. That's pretty cool. Creed Humphrey, or yeah, Creed Humphrey, Joe Tooney, yeah. Chris Jones, Kelsey Mahomes. How the hell yeah. did McDuffie and Sneed not make it in? Or Harrison Butker. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, I that's three guys for sure. I I could even see throwing in uh, some Trey Smith action. Yeah. Um, and, and or some Tommy Townsend. You know, Tommy's had a couple uh rough spots so far this season. But I mean he he, he was he was a freaking stud last year, and he's not far off from what he was last year. So, um, yeah, yeah, he, he we got really a few strong guys. punts and plays this year. Yeah, we got a few guys, man. I mean, he, he the conversion pass, the the deep out to to uh, Watson there on on the fourth down conversion that was saucy. Ooh, that was Pro Bowl worthy right there. How are you not yeah, licking your chops itself. to get a guy like Townsend in and run a trick play in the Pro Bowl? Right. Sheesh, sheesh. Yeah, but <laughs> a couple of guys, man, who uh, who who should have got their pu- uh, ticket punched. Where you know, this is why I'm not huge on the on the Pro Bowl anymore. It really doesn't yeah. matter. One, because the Pro Bowl is kind of lame. They did a much better job last year. But two, it's like just it a was bunch fun. of Joes, you know, smacking on the Chiefs because they don't want to see Chiefs in the Pro Bowl anymore. That's kind of what it's turned into, really. Mm. I mean, from what we've seen now at, at this point, Legarius needs. Easily a top three corner in the league, if not the best in the league this year. Yeah, dude had a hell of a season. I think with, uh, you know, as long as Pro Bowl show up on like a Hall of Famer's resume, it's going to be worth something. And the fact that Sneed's not going to get that accolade on his resume, I think, is a is a problem. And that's a, a clear problem when Jalen Ramsey's getting it for playing half the season and playing like dog water when he is playing. I'm yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty disappointed that he's going to get that over over Snead or McDuffie. Yeah, yeah, good point, good point. So Rasheed Rice, man, what a stud! Rookie franchise Absolute record unit. in receiving yards and touchdowns. Got seven of those, almost a thousand yards for him. Um, we talked about it leading into, I think it was the final game of the season, uh, how. Rasheed Rice was the most productive rookie receiver that Andy Reid has ever had on any team, Eagles and Chiefs. More yards and touchdowns than Deshaun Watson or Deshaun Jackson, who's right there uh, with him. Impressive. Yep. A lot, a lot to be happy about there. Not to mention, we got our eighth straight division title. So a lot to yeah. be proud of with this team. Not all of our streaks are dying this year. So that's good to know at least. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, like I said, man, we've had a a struggle of a season, but still look at what we've done. Yeah. We're, we're, we're doing all right, man. We're still, we still, we still are. The the foundation is there. It really is. Yeah. The foundation is there. I'm not worried about this thing at all. And we're, we're we're one or two pieces away from being a one seat again. Yeah. And we're the three seed. We're the three seed. Yeah. It's not like we're talking about, you know, sitting at the seven seed here, sitting on the bubble or something like that. Yeah, like we're some fringe it, wild card team. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. People still do not want to see us in the playoffs. That's a fact. That's a fact. You don't want that beast to come out. There's and, no. And everybody's. There's everybody's no wondering if it's it more is, success it than would, Mahomes in the postseason this year. So, I mean, I totally agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I, I mean, t- to that point though, with the three C, that's the first time under under Patrick Mahomes. You know, I, again, last had six, to happen eventually, years, I guess. <laughs> it did, and, and to be quite honest with you, he 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 might be a wild card team someday. You know, and we'll all be sitting around like, well, whoa, we think we're going to talk about this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, so, wild wild card teams win the Super Bowl too, right, Bryce? They sure do, dude. They sure do. <laughs> he's probably he's probably texting in, isn't he? Yeah, I'll I'll, yes. I'll wait to see what happens. Yes, sir. Yeah. You already know. Yes, sir. Giants Two fan. Time. There, proud of it. We'll proud of it. it. A lot to be proud of with that. I'm I'm proud of yeah. it. <laughs> so, you mentioned it. First time being a three seed. Uh, we're poised to play 
Mahomes' first road playoff game, right? Everything goes right in that Dolphins game. We are going to be heading to Buffalo more than likely unless Buffalo does something to shock the world <laughs> and and lose to, to Pittsburgh, the seventh seed. That would be the only scenario in which we continue this streak. But currently we are set to play our 14th straight home playoff game, a streak that is the longest active and dating back to 2016. It's also the longest all time. The Patriots got really close with nine straight home playoff games during their runs. Um, 14 straight, man. That's five straight seasons of Arrowhead playoff football um, bumped in with a couple of first round exits in 16 and 17. And then this game here in 2023, wild stuff. A lot of wild stuff there, but, you know, crazy things, crazy things can happen in the playoffs. We've said it all year long. Just get us a ticket to the dance, yep. and we'll yep. see what happens after that. Yep, let the boys take care of business after you get a ticket, man. That's all. That, let's just go dance, you know? Get a little salsa in. That's all let's we need. Get we some salsa need a, in, baby. Just need a chance, man. Just need a chance. Let these guys ride. <laughs> I'm not trying to uh, we're not let's ride in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> There's some bad juju there. Yeah, there is. There is. Cuz you're right. But all right, Dan, so uh, you know, moving into uh the rest of this week, we're looking at uh, a little pregame show for the Miami Dolphins, but before we sign yes, us sir. off here, I want to talk about um, our last sponsor here, which is Better Homes and Gardens, specifically uh Katie Lawrence, um who's doing incredible things for them this year. She's about to have an incredible year this year. She's been working her ass off, that's for sure. But if you are looking to buy or to sell or to build a home in the Kansas City metro area, Katie is going to be the one that's going to take care of all that dirty work for you. So you guys can sit back and chill, pick what cabinets you want, pick the couch you want, pick the floors you want. And she's going to make sure all that dirty legal work is done on the backside. Um, so if you are looking for you know, somebody that's going to take care of that for you so you can buy, sell, or build a home in the Kansas City area, be sure you're getting a hold of her. Her number is 816-868-1920. So be sure to call her. Make that happen. But, Dan, we're signing off here. And uh, like I said, later in the week, we're going to get into the pregame talk here. Be sure you're out there following us on uh, all the social media sites out there, at the Fastest 40. And yep. uh, let's make it happen, baby. Let's get it. Let's go, Chiefs. Playoffs. So We're here. Playoffs. Playoffs. <laughs> Talk about playoffs. Peace. <laughs>